Vladislav III went down in history as one of the most ruthless men ever to exist. Responsible for thousands upon thousands of deaths and a sadistic torture. Science fiction novels like Dracula of Bram Stoker have given the story of Vladislav a place in today's pop culture and captured the imaginations of vampire fanatics around the world. In this goth doc, we will travel together to 15th century Wallachia and take a closer look at this miserable tyrant. Welcome to the Gothic Bookshelf. Vladislav III, or Vlad the Impaler, was born in 1430 or 1431 in this old house in Sigisawara. His father, Vlad II, was the Basarab, Prince of Wallachia, and Duke of the Almas and Fagaras districts of Transylvania. He was also a warrior for the Order of the Dragon, an order of religious knights destined to defend the Holy Roman Catholic Empire. Vlad II was known as Dracul, or Dragon, and his son, Vladislav III, was called Draculia, son of the dragon. As a boy, Dracula received a prince's education and was trained in combat, government, military, and political strategies. When Dracula was an adolescent, his father was cheated by the Sultan Murad II, and he and his younger brother were taken hostage by the Turkish Empire to guarantee his father's cooperation. Vlad II was between a rock and a hard place. He had taken an oath with the church to defend its lands against foreign invaders, but his boys were in the hands of the sultan, who would not hesitate in decapitating them at the slightest suspicion of treason. Finally, Dracula's father and older brother were assassinated in a plot between the nobles of Wallachia and John Hunyadi, the king of Hungary, and Vlad the Nasty was put on the throne. Dracula spent three years as a Turkish political prisoner and had developed great cunning, insubordination, and brutality. During that time, from his prison window, he had witnessed countless tortures and executions. After his father's assassination, Vlad grew a thirst for vengeance. The Sultan thought he could control him, so he released him and gave him an army to go reclaim the Wallachian throne. The twenty-year-old Dracula did it, but only retained power for two months because he was afraid of a new assassination plot against him. So he escaped. He went to hide with his cousin, the Prince Bogdan of Moldova. He remained there for three years, until Bogdan too was killed. Then, having no other choice and risking his life, he went to plead forgiveness of the same man who had killed his father, the king, John Hunyadi. Hunyadi did not trust the nasty on the throne of Wallachia anymore, and he forgave the young Dracula. For the next five years, from 1451 to 1456, Hunyadi was Vlad's political and military mentor. They fought in many campaigns, and together successfully defended the southern territories. Then, in 1456, two things happened. First, Dracula was reinstituted on the throne of Wallachia, and second, John Hunyadi died in a battle. Vlad was finally back in power, and he felt free to do his will with the kingdom. He started a reign of terror, during which he got the nickname that would go down in history, Vlad the Impaler. His hatred for the nobility had not disappeared, and he felt that entire towns were responsible for his father's and brother's deaths. His first instructions were strict curfews and severe punishment for anyone who broke the law, but nobody could imagine what Vlad was planning in secret. On an Easter Sunday, he invited hundreds of nobles and merchants to a feast and celebration. They were all surprised when his soldiers showed up and arrested them, the whole higher class, men, women, and children, were enslaved and forced to work building Dracula's fortress, an almost impenetrable castle in the mountains of Fagaras. 
In surprise attacks, the Impaler wiped out entire Turkish towns, and even some of his own kingdom, just for entertainment. On many bloody occasions, tens of thousands of innocent villagers were impaled in a single day. It was said he liked to display them in geometric forms and eat during their torturing. The Tyrant Prince had no limit. It is said around 80,000 people were tortured and killed during the six years of his second reign. In 1456, the Turkish army had advanced and taken Targovist, the capital of Wallachia. Dracula had to escape and take refuge in his fortress, but even there the Sultan's forces found and besieged him. It was in this assault when history tells that someone close to Dracula shot an arrow through a window with a message, a warning that the Turks were to advance on the castle the next morning. The wife of Vlad found the letter and preferred to take her own life rather than risk being taken as a prisoner. She ran up to the main tower and nobody could prevent her jumping out the window and rolling down the mountain into the Arx River. Dracula, though devastated and desperate, did not contemplate suicide and decided to make a risky escape down a secret passage in the mountain to a cave next to the river. With the help of expert highlanders and the best horses he could find, he barely escaped the Turks through hard trails in the Carpathian Mountains. Defeated, the Impaler then went to look for asylum in Hungary with the king, Matthias Hunyadi, the son of John Hunyadi, but he is imprisoned in the castle Fagaras for the brutal killings of his own people and allies. During his imprisonment, he was probably permitted to assist some events, because very soon he started a love affair with the king's sister, and they were soon married. Twelve years later, in 1476, when someone was needed to fight for the throne of Wallachia, Dracula was liberated and sent to battle the Turks in the south of Transylvania. Vlad marched with Hungarian and Transylvanian troops and recovered most of the territory. In November 1476, he was named the Prince of Wallachia for the third time. His previous acts of cruelty had left the Impaler with many enemies among the nobility of the kingdom, and, having converted to Catholicism to marry the sister of the King Matthias, brought him more problems in Romania, which was of the Orthodox faith. Dracula was on the throne again, but this time he couldn't trust anybody, except in a small Hungarian personal guard. Two months later, at the age of 45, he died fighting in Bucharest. In one version, it is said that he had disguised himself as a Turk to fool his enemies, but his own men mistook him and killed him. In the other version, he is assassinated in battle in a revenge of the nobles of Wallachia. Vladislav was then decapitated, and his head was sent to the Sultan in Constantinople, where it was displayed as he displayed his victims. Monks of the monastery of the island of Snagov, that the father of Dracula had helped build, in secret took his headless body and buried him in an unmarked grave on the island. And with his death, a legend was born that was preserved in the oral traditions of the people that inhabit Transylvania. In some songs and stories, Prince Dracula is celebrated for having defended the territory against foreign invaders. In others, he is cursed for his torturous reign. <laughs>